Okay, in this video, we're going to go over another problem involving free fall kinematics. And in this case, we're going to figure out the maximum height that an object will go when it's projected with an initial velocity straight up of 15 meters per second. So let's get started. All right, we have an object that's thrown straight up into the air with an initial velocity of 15 meters per second, and we want to know how high it's going to go into the air. Now, I just like to draw a little picture. Now, here I just happen to have a person who's throwing the ball up in the air. It could be anything. You can just draw the object. But you want to write down maybe that has initial velocity of 15 meters per second and it's going up into the air. And when we throw it up in the air, it's going to reach some height. It's going to stop before it comes back down. Now, we're not really worried about the coming back down part. We're only worried about the going up part because we want to know how high it's going to go. All right. And that is really just how high it's going to go. And then it's going to come back down. All right. So that is really everything we kind of know from the text of the problem here. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is get out, and I think you should write down all five of the variables that are contained in the kinematic equation. That would be the initial and the final velocity, the change in position, the change in y, because the ball is going up along the y-axis, the acceleration, and the time. Now, we're given the initial velocity, so we can just write the initial velocity down. Now, what else do we know? There are a couple of things that we know that are not explicitly stated in the problem, and you need to be able to recognize this, because a lot of times they will not be ex explicitly stated in the problem. We know when the ball goes up or the object goes up and there, it stops. We're only concerned with the up part. So when it stops, that means that the final velocity is going to be zero meters per second. So we can put down that the final velocity is zero meters per second. We also know the acceleration minus 9.8 meters per second squared. The acceleration due to gravity, this is a free fall problem. So that'll be a constant in this case. And we're looking for the height or delta y. And we're not going to use the time or we're not given the time. All right. So you can see, once again, we know three things. We're asked to solve a fourth. So now we can get out our kinematic equations, and we can look for the correct equation. Now, we are looking for delta y. So the equation has to have, at a minimum, delta y. Well, this equation does not have delta y in it. So we're not going to be able to use this equation. Now, all three of the other equations, 1, 2, and 3, all have delta y in it. But in addition to delta y, it has to have the other three things that we know. Initial, final, and acceleration. Because you'll notice every, not every, but each of these kinematic equations has four variables in it. If you know three and are looking for a fourth, you should be able to use one of these equations. That means this one has the change in position or the height in it. But it has the initial velocity, which we know, the final velocity, and it has the time. We don't know the time, so we don't know all three of the other variables, so we can't use this equation. The same thing goes for this equation, because this equation has time. We don't know time. Now, what about this last equation? Well, delta y, that's what we're looking for, delta y. And then do we know the other three variables? Well, do we know the acceleration? Yes, we know the acceleration. Do we know the initial velocity? Yes, we know the initial velocity. Do we know the final? Yes, we know the final. Therefore, we can use this equation to solve for delta y, the height of the ball. All right, let's do that right now. Now, here's our equation. I like to, before I plug any values in, rearrange the equation and solve it for delta y. Now, the first thing you should notice is the final velocity is 0. That means the final velocity squared is going to be 0. So this term goes to 0. Now, to solve for delta y, I am going to do two things. First, I'm going to move the initial velocity squared over to the other side. I'm going to subtract the initial velocity squared from both sides. Then I'm going to divide by 2a, and that will give me that the change in y, the height of the ball, the height of the object, is minus vi squared divided by 2a. All right, now I have rearranged the equation to solve what I'm looking for, and now I can simply plug the values in. That means that the height of the ball, delta y, is going to be equal to minus 15 meters per second squared divided by 2 times the acceleration, which is 2 times minus 9.8. All right. Now you can see we have a minus on the top, a minus on the bottom. We're going to divide this. We're going to positive number. The ball is going in the positive direction. So that's good that we get a positive answer. Okay. So we're simply going to square 15. I think that's 225 divided by 2 times 9.81. And we get that the height that the ball reaches or the height that any object would reach when it's projected with an initial velocity of 15 meters per second, straight up under free fall conditions, the height of the ball, the height of the object will go up to, well, the height that it will reach 
is 11.5 meters. All right, 11 and a half meters. So there you go. That's all there is to it. We did the following steps. We drew a picture, filled in some information we knew. We wrote down all five variables. We got out our kinematic equations, chose the right kinematic equation, rearranged the equation for the, the, um, the variable we're looking for, plugged the values in, got the answer with the correct units. Pretty straightforward. Follow those steps for all of your kinematic problems, and you will be successful too. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please, 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 please do all of the following three things. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. And leave me a nice positive comment on this video. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the next video.